Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome on this uh, actually quite sunny Friday down here in London uh, for the last webinar of this week to you, our gorgeous members and students, and uh, quite a few other people uh, linking in as well who want to see what you, all this ICB stuff is all about. So, welcome to you as well. And we've got people, as always, right across the country, north, south, east, west. One or two people from overseas. Um, I believe we've got somebody here from the Seychelles, of all places, and uh, a couple of people from, uh, what have we got? We've got, I think we've got an Australian on, a South African. So anyway, welcome to you all. Um, those of you who missed the seven that we've done so far, this is uh, number eight, if I'm right. We're on number nine. Oh, sorry, we've had eight. This is number nine. Oh, life's going so fast at the moment. Uh, I'm Gary Carter, for those of you who don't know. Uh, I co-founded the Institute with my wife, June, uh, 24 years ago this coming November. And we've been here ever since. And uh, it's times like this that we really realize what a huge community we've created and how you all work together and uh, what great people we really are, even more than we normally know and recognize. So I'm fortunate today that I have uh, Amy Copeland with us, who is the anchor for today. She will be fielding your questions uh, so that I don't have to keep fishing through and uh, answering similar questions over and over again. She's going to try and group them together. You will get a name mentioned. So if you don't want your name mentioned online, just please put anonymous. We do get a few of those. That's not a problem. It doesn't mean the question won't be asked or answered. We'll do what we can on that. Um, I'm also very pleased today to be uh, joined by the, uh, as she put it, delighted but petrified, Jane James. Hello, Jane. Hello, Gary. Hi. Um, nice to see you. It's a, it's a while since we've seen you on our screens, but uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, Jane was one of our uh, original members, I think probably 12, 15 years ago, when we actually did a, our first video of members and Jane was there with uh, a baby and how old is that baby now? Alfie is coming up to 17 now. Wow yeah time goes on and you're still with us and that's fantastic we love to see our members staying with us. Nin 1999 that was then when we did that apparently so, so that, that's fantastic. Uh, now Jane is one of our fellows uh, and she's uh, a very busy lady. In fact, we thought she wasn't coming on for a minute, but we're told it was because she was doing a webinar with somebody else just before this. So she had a two minute break, quick uh, nip off to the toilet, pick up the glass, hopefully not a gin and tonic so that she keeps pretty cosmetics for the rest of today. And uh, she, anyway, she's back with us now, but she runs her own practice. And uh, the other thing that is not unique, but very interesting about Jane is that she has become elected to serve on her local council. So she is the local councillor for district and town council, sorry, for Breckland District Council. Uh, so that's up, uh, you're currently uh, speaking to us from Thetford, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Brilliant. So uh, way up in Norfolk there, and uh, so that, that's fantastic. And we're pleased to have you along today because it gives us a chance to get another view not only of how it is running in practice, but also in your job as a councillor, because I, I gather you're on the executive uh, support team. Um, it must be pretty hectic for the council at the moment, handing out all this lovely government money, hopefully. It's, it's a huge challenge at the moment, and our, our officers and staff at the council are absolutely amazing. They've adapted, they've overcome, you know, people have been redeployed, and they're doing really, really well. So. Yeah, all I'd say is I appreciate all the frustrations that our members are having, businesses are having, um, and I know watching some of these previously, there's been a little bit of confusion um, or people aren't sure about where things are. Um, obviously the challenge is, is because it's such an evolving situation, we are learning and adapting that at the same time. So bear with us, but the information's coming through and we are getting there. So do you have anything to do with these new small business grants that councils have been given the money to hand out, this sort of up to 10,000? 
So the district council where I am are responsible for that at the moment. Um, they are writing to uh, companies, but also there's facilities on their website, and this will be the same across the country um, for those authorities, whether it's a unitary or district or borough, um, there will be facilities within websites for links to that and forms to fill in and that kind of thing. So yeah, the best thing is a Google search, to be perfectly honest, or go onto your local authority's website and have a look there. Great, yeah. Um, I should be added a hub when this first started, so it's sort of into week three or uh, probably just, yeah, just about crossing over to week four now. But that has been an absolute moving feast. Uh, the first three days that we were doing these uh, presentations, we had Jackie Mount with us, and I think she's normally online as well and listening. But she was trying to cope and each day the information that she was giving out was absolutely correct but totally different to what she'd given the day before and a lot of the questions although it was nice to have Jackie with us and we were all enjoying talking to each other um, that's all it mainly was because we didn't have answers then we're slowly picking off those answers now and we had Ian Holloway with us yesterday I don't know if you were on with that but Ian Holloway uh, is a payroll expert uh, and a compliance manager as well and um, he was being asked questions yesterday, which he hadn't even thought about. So our members, uh, I'm not sure if there was a competition going on somewhere to let, let stump Ian or what it was, but he, um, he came off there afterwards and he said, that was hard work. He said, you know, it's surprising. I think I'm right in the middle of payroll, uh, which I am, but there are so many different questions that I hadn't even thought about. And at one stage, he rocked back on his chair and he sat there looking up at the ceiling. And I thought we'd lost contact with him for a minute. And he suddenly bounced back up and said, I don't know the answer to that one. I will find out. And so those of you who wanted those, some of those answers, um, we're always putting answers up on our Q&A session uh, after each day. So I gather we had Sobe on earlier on from our team and she was saying that she'd already put up the answers from yesterday. So those things are there as well, which are great. Um, I think the thing is, it's such a big learning curve, but it's not learning when we're necessarily enjoying it. You know, this is the problem. It is that we're having to learn this um, because of this uh, pandemic, this sort of mini disaster, well, mass massive disaster that we have on at the moment. Uh, it, it's not exactly always the best time to learn when you're being forced into something. So how are you doing? How are you finding with your clients? It's a challenge. Um, and the issue is, is we're all kind of in that same boat, as you've already mentioned. The information is coming out for, on UK.gov. We respond to it. And if the situation changes, we have to adapt. And I think that's probably a big challenge for us bookkeepers because we like to be in the know, positive yeah. and supportive. Um, and when it's a changing situation, it is really difficult to manage. And we just have to be a bit kind to ourselves and go, OK, the situation is this today. It might not be that tomorrow. But all we can do is try and keep up to date, keep um, you know, abreast of the situation. And I have to say the best thing that I've found so far is um, subscribing to gov.uk for the updates on the COVID-19 information. That has been fantastic. Don't do it as a, um, a message when you get it through as every update. I've done it on a daily one and then I get to see everything in one go because otherwise my inbox was absolutely full. But that's a really, really good way of sort of trying to just keep abreast of what is an ever-changing situation. Yeah. And, and Carol Gibson, thank you. She's just come on and said she loves my tie. So that is my tie. This is with violins and harps and various things on there and stuff. It's, uh, uh, somebody has already contact, uh, commented that I haven't got my jacket on today. Well, no, it's hot in this room that I'm sitting in at the moment. I can't open the window because buses are going past and it's a bit noisy. So uh, I'm sitting here and uh, trying, to, trying to keep cool. So uh, it, it's Dress Down Friday, or this is my version of Dress Down Friday, which is, which is not that far down. But anyway... Um, so obviously we've got clients who uh, probably three weeks ago suddenly decided to uh, put up shop, close up the doors, leave, etc. And some, uh, particularly if they're in the retail sector, something like that, still are. But I think what we're finding is that emerging out of that now are those people saying, well, hold on a minute, no, I don't have to close down. I've just got to be careful. I, I need to keep my business running. Um, and we're saying that our members are saying that people are really coming back to them for more and more 
very practical information. And even though it's on gov.uk and even though it's on every television program, they're still wanting us as their advisors to give them the, the golden nugget that, that is going to work it all out for them. You find that? Yes, and, and I think that's probably testament to the ICB's community because members feel like they can trust us. And I say us as in the royal we almost. Um, and, and you find that certain. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I find that in terms of the council work as well. It's very, very similar. The information might be out there and they can easily find it. But it's dealing with someone that you trust and you value. And it's reassurance as well. And that's what we're there for is, is to support you know, our members, our residents. It's very, very similar in those terms. So, yeah, it's a bit of hand holding, but that's what we're here for. Have you got some sort of bangle on or something or other? There's a tick tapping going on in the distance here. You know, I can I can see that. Uh, you know, you're talking away there. I just want to say if it's, it's you, because I don't think it's me. It's it probably my you, seat. You know? Sorry. Oh, no, it's right. a bit of WD forty. Yeah, it's all right. Um, like like most people that we get on here, you know, particularly the ladies, they're almost ready to take off at some stage. You know, but anyway, never mind. Never mind. That's great. Um, so yeah, it's. it's uh, they are challenging times, but what I'd like to, as this is Friday, and obviously, uh, you know, we can talk between ourselves about what's going on here. I'd like to see some of our members perhaps giving um, an indication of how things are moving for them, because most of the questions haven't changed much since yesterday. So the answers are probably best found on the Q&A, because then I'm not going to say something off my top of my head, which is wrong, um, and building up towards next week. So by Monday, I think one or two things will have changed. A few more people will have put their first um, request in for, uh, well, they'll have, they'll have done their payroll, etc. But what I'd like to really hear from people is, you know, how you're coping, and, and then uh, Amy can come on and, and give us an answer uh, to some of those things. One thing we are finding, and I think it always happens when anything like this takes place that we're hearing stories of people getting conned out of money, which is which is absolutely disgusting. I, I just can't see where these people are coming from. But you know, I, I there was a story yesterday about somebody that was going around and offering to go shopping for people. Uh, they gave them the money, and the shopping was never seen again. You know, people are gullible. But if people are, you know, they're old, they're by themselves, they've not seen anybody for three weeks or something, or other, they are very susceptible to this. So I think we all need to, to work to stop that. But the bit that affects us most is that we're getting an increasing number of stories from our members who are being asked to, to uh, twist the truth a little bit when, when it comes to putting through payroll or, or whatever else it is. And also, um, if they're applying for any money to, to make the company look a little bit more profitable or more of a going concern than it was. And I've had to say this a couple of times, and I, I will say it again, that we do have to be careful because uh, at times like this, uh, people are perhaps going to get their guard down a little bit. But as Ian Holloway was saying yesterday, he thinks once it is through, the government is going to say, well, you've had a heck of a lot of money from us. What did you do with it? Is it okay? Have you got it properly? Were you entitled to it? And this word entitled is being used more and more in, in uh, the, the uh, discussions that are coming out of uh, biz and uh, or BAS, as it's now called, and various government bodies. So it's, it's very difficult to have a, a quick decision on whether somebody is eligible for money or looks as if they need it. And uh, so I, I suppose in the council terms you are dealing with a slightly smaller area it must make those sorts of decisions a little bit easy because you'll, you'll know where people live and what they look at. you know that more than a government that's talking about a national uh, doling out of money and, and they're relying on banks and various other people to to work this out for them yeah, I mean, in terms of our business team at the District Council, we're really lucky that we have a proactive bunch that like to get out there and engage with people and the businesses um, and their regular attenders to things like local business forums for networking, because that's a key part of the growth agenda within the area. Um, obviously, they hold the information because um, in Breckland, we're responsible for the collection 
of the national non-domestic rates or business rates as you like to call them so they already have that information um, in terms of your rateable values and all that side of things and obviously in terms of planning permissions we know what sector people are in as well so that's where they're really busy focusing their efforts and, and the officers are doing a fantastic job what I would say is picking up on that point that you made about um, entitlement uh, as you do you you re read reread and reread again everything and I was looking at the claim for the furloughing and there is a lovely line in there that says HMRC retain the right to audit your claims retrospectively so I think you know we need to be mindful that yeah some of them it will be justify what you've done with this money please yes I and I think that's obvious I mean there are uh, some in the reason for about uh, I think it's three and a half million self-employed businesses and small businesses that don't actually have any external advisor to help them with their, with their um, accounts and with their books. And I think probably they'll, they'll keep a, a stronger eye on them. I'm hoping that uh, they take into account that if somebody's got not just a bookkeeper, but an ICB bookkeeper, that, that the chances are it's been done right and that, that they'll be the last in the line for some serious auditing. But we're not really sure uh, where that's coming from. And um, some of our members have been saying that other uh, people that the companies work with, you know, accountants or tax advisors or whatever, are seeing things slightly differently. But I think it's always been the case that bookkeepers see real life, what's going on, absolutely everything that goes through the books. It's not a, well, let's justify my fee. I'll say, you know, I'll charge you a thousand, but I'll save you eleven hundred. I mean, our bookkeepers don't sell like that, obviously. So I think I think we start from a better position. But I, as, so as far as your practice is concerned, are you all cloud-based now or so you're still desktop? Um, still desktop on some, but I can remote into those clients. So, so that's good. We would, I was already talking to them sort of two weeks before um, the stricter distancing rules came in um, and we've gotten everything set up. So, yeah, I'm really lucky that I, I have a proactive bunch of clients as well, which makes life a lot easier. Okay, and one question that came through yesterday was if I am uh, preparing payroll for a company and they're saying everybody's been furloughed, I have, a, I have a bit of a suspicion that actually the staff is still working. How, how do I check on that? And that's a bit difficult, isn't it, if you can't physically go and see what's going on. But I think that that will, that will be visible when the next set of invoices and everything else comes out. I, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult one, but it gives you an idea of some of the strange considerations that we've never had to make before or uh, take before. And um, it, It's all pretty new stuff, isn't it? It is, and it's a huge challenge for our members. Um, but I think if we're a practical, common sense bunch, to be perfectly honest with you, that's why we're bookkeepers. Um, and I think, as you said, you know, realistically, the pictures will come out when you know, the next set of invoicing comes through. Um, I've got one client, he said, yeah, I'm going to have to furlough everybody, but I'm going to still keep coming in. And I've said, you know, you're not going to be furloughed. You are keeping the business running. And he said, not a problem, Jane. Are my staff looked after? As, yeah, if they're not working, not a problem. Great. Now, you're one of our typical members, I, I must say. You... Uh, so 21 years ago, you just started your business. You were working off the kitchen table. You now have an office, by the look of it. Yeah, you have an office. Um, what's kept you excited about bookkeeping for 21 years? I think somewhere along the line, I'm slightly OCD, and I like creating order from chaos, um, which we all know as bookkeepers, those are normally either the supermarket carrier bags, or if they're a really busy company, a black bin bag. Um, and we still sometimes sit on the floor and have to sort paperwork out. Um, the products like Auto Entry and Receipt Bank have made that so much easier. But there are still the clients that will empty out the footwell of the car and go make sense of this. And, you know, that's, that's part of the fun. And the fact that business, it changes, but it stays the same. There's this wonderful constancy because, you know, double entry bookkeeping is double entry bookkeeping it's not going to change. But businesses develop and evolve and change and it's those personal relationships that I think um, very much 
are the difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant's relationship. And yeah, we're really lucky that we're on the coal face with our clients quite often. Great. And I, we must stress, other than me ringing you yesterday or Wednesday before and saying, would you like to come on? I haven't given you what to say, have I? Because you're, you're more or less saying everything I ever say whenever can I, can I get a chance to get on stage or anything else. I mean, it, it's the truth, isn't it? I mean, it's straightforward, really. It, it really is. And people, clients value that frank kind of relationship, you know, um, and it is, you know, if we do this, what happens? And we are that strategic voice that is present in the business more often, you know, than, than the accountants are. And I'm really lucky in the fact that the accountants that I work with, with my clients also appreciate that approach and use me for want of a better phrase, you know, as, as that um, sort of translator, that link between the businesses. And I think that's really where we do come into our own and where, you know, all the successful practices that I speak to, you know, they do that. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I've done quite a few of these now. And we've also done some for students. I can't remember where I said it, but I, I, I did say, uh, I have said that the thing is that what, nobody goes in, other than bookkeepers, nobody goes into business saying, I'm going to start a business because I want to do books. They go into business to do everything else but the books. And then they finally realize that the books need catching up with. And that's when either they panic and, and make some sort of hash of it themselves or they find somebody else who can help. And I, and I think what we've tried to do over the last uh, 24 years is try and convince small businesses that you don't think accountant first, you think bookkeeper first, because it's not actually the year end accounts that is the first stumbling block for small businesses. It's the day to day accounts. And that's where I think we come in and it's, it's what we're trying to do at the moment with our level four qualification, because level four, is we're, we're doing uh, the work that the bookkeeper has done all of the books, etc. But level four is all about, well, okay, so what do you do with it now to help your client use those figures or to help your business, uh, the, your employee use those figures to their advantage? And, and I think that's, uh, it's something that our members sometimes think, well, I've done the books, I place them on the desk and away I go. And I always say, that makes you a bad bookkeeper in my mind. You have to. They won't understand what those figures mean. Uh, and, and, you know, so many times we say that uh, cash in the bank is profit. No, not right. Uh, and if it hasn't got a, a, a bracket around the bottom, then everything must be fine. Uh, but small businesses need a little bit more insight, but it has to be in a way that doesn't bore them and they don't switch off. And I think that's where this personal relationship comes in then, because once they've got to trust you and once they know you, then they're a little bit more open to you giving them... Um, We'll call it advice, but it's gentle nudging here and there, I think, which, which it begins as. Uh, and I think, that, I think that's great. So um, you're still, you, you've obviously got quite a busy time with the council. You do, you, you, um, that, that's, that's full time. But I suppose with that next year, you might get voted off or something. You, it's, it's a little bit more, uh, is it? Is it or, can you, or do you know roughly how long you're going to be doing this? Well, all things being equal, um, as I just got re-elected re um, to the town council in May and then elected to Breckland in May, um, all things being equal, I've got four years at this. So I'm a quarter of the way through nearly now. Um, and it's a right. massive learning curve. Um, yeah. It's not just bins. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it's quite good that we've got members like yourself who've got a foot in both camps because this is how we learn. I mean, Jackie Mount has been with us years. I mean, you wouldn't, she's only 23. You, you, you wouldn't realise that. But anyway, so she's been with us since a very young age. But um, she's been in practice. She's been in education. She's lectured this stuff. She's managed other people lecturing it. And um, then she went, she went to work for a company, a quite a difficult company that got all sorts of foreign transactions and all this sort of stuff and uh, works of art and various things. Then she's come back in to be with us. So she's got such a lot to draw on. And, and I think that, that helps. And also because most of our members come in having done something else, you know, they, the normal route certainly for the, uh, the sort of the women that we have in membership is that they, they have children and then look for a, a different uh, career that they can build up and commit to an increasing amount as their children um, grow up and, and go off their hands. Um, but it means that they bring such a vast amount of extra experience with them. 
Um, I mean, Carol Gibson, who was who I alluded to before because I just saw the note up there. She's the chair of our Devon branch, and she's got quite a lot of business knowledge from the past. I think she was in banking and sort of all sorts of things. And we went down there, Jim and I went down there recently to one of the branch meetings, and she was telling us some of the advice that she'd given to one of her clients that was a restaurant. And uh, uh, I think it's actually sort of a, a cafe. And she was saying, well, this is how I would do it. And it wasn't technically bookkeeping experience, but it was something else that she brought with her. So she said to this small cafe, look, you've got such a big menu, reduce the menu to half, double your price, because you're throwing so much away, and there's too much choice. And apparently, you know, she's now got a friend for life and probably cups of coffee every time she goes past. But anyway, that's that's one of those things. So, I, you know, it's, it, it's quite a unique thing. I What I tend to find with a lot of um, accountants, and I'm, I'm not just looking at accountants, is they go from university into accounting and they don't have the actual working business experience, which which is a bit of a shame, really. A bit, a bit like some of our politicians, I think, but nonetheless... Uh, it's doing all right at the moment. Amy, if you're there, are we starting to stack up any questions, anything that you want, or any, hopefully, a few um, experiences from our members? Yes. Well, we could start off on the positive things. Um, Sylvia Borhill has um, brought on three new clients this week and a new staff member. Oh, wow. So, well done, Sylvia. Well done, Sylvia. Uh, so that's good news. And somebody said, Naomi says that things are settling down. Um, and she, she thinks she's helped her clients understand everything and they know what benefits they can get or what grants. Um, however, she's doing very long hours, 14 hour days, she says, but now finally back onto normal hours, but is in the shielding group. Um, but still, you know, pressing on. This is great, isn't it? Press on. Carry on regardless, as they say. Um, one of the members um, said, you know, I, I said something on the other day about whatever you do, please get back in touch with your clients. Talk to your clients because it's all about communication, communication, communication. And she very kindly, uh, one, one of our members very kindly dropped me a note to say, thank you very much. That was the best um, help I'd ever been given. I've been on to my clients. I was very nervous about it. I took my confidence from what you said, and they're all staying with me. They're all on board. We have, you know, and, and it has made such a difference. And I feel so much happier about everything now. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure June, who's sitting here, um, will no doubt give me her name in due course. But uh, yeah, but anyway, actually, I'm just told uh, she's actually uh, an accountant. So yeah, that was even further from what they normally do then, but never mind. <laughs> Anything else, Amy? Um, and then also on a positive note, Catherine says that um, she hasn't had too much of a delay uh, uh, applying for her DBS criminal record check for her practice license. So she oh, good, used good. a commercial company called Dig Identity and has it looks to have taken just a few days. So that's good news. And moving on to stuff about councils and getting grants, because maybe maybe Jane might be able to help. Um, Nicola Payne says, credit to the councils. I've had my business rate grant through already and her office is safe. So that's very good. Um, now, but Amanda, Nicola's back in South Wales, of course. So the Welsh might be moving quicker, but okay, good. Yeah, it seems like Wales and Scotland are moving a little bit faster from what we've heard in the chat so far um, in the last couple of weeks. But Amanda says, um, not so lucky where she is. She just says some of the councils don't seem to have portals up and businesses are closed. So how are they going to get the mail? Which is something that Sylvia has also asked about. How are you supposed to get your mail if you're being notified by the council to your office address and is there a date do you know if there's a date by which the councils are supposed to have the information and the the claims portals up i think they they were given the money on wednesday as far as the announcement was made by government so i understand it's in their bank uh based on their estimates of how much they were going to need to be paid out so it's there and waiting to go so i think the portals must be up because some people are definitely already being paid uh and i understand that the next thing that's coming out is likely to be an increase in the, either in the amount or the, the group of people that is eligible for it. So um, it, it seems to be there. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, so I'm not 100% sure on that. Perhaps somebody else could tell us. Obviously, we've got the Welsh. Um, Jane, is, is, 
Norfolk, is that, are, you, are you doling out the money already? Um, I'll be completely honest with you, I don't know. Ah. Um, very mindful that obviously you have the resilience forums that are set up and then you have within sort of the sort of counties and then you have it cascading down. So I don't want to give anyone wrong information because you know, that's not what we do. Um, okay. The first well, port of call is those local authorities. Yeah. Okay, that, that's great. Um, Jane, by the way, is, uh, is a pet. Those of you who know all about your money laundering, a uh, politically exposed person, because obviously she's just said she's on the looks at the council looks after business. She's a councillor. She's running her own business. She's got clients who are running their businesses. Uh, so you know she comes high on the list of uh, targets for those Russian oligarchs who want her to set up a business, uh, allow her to run a business, uh, allow them to run a business in the middle of uh, leafy Norfolk somewhere. Um, and then uh, dole out the uh, grants from council. It, it's sort of thing which, which is what pets are all about. It's it's having uh, too many closed loops. But uh, yeah, we're keeping an eye on you, Jane. But you seem to be okay so far. <laughs> Trying very very hard. Well, I mean, I have to say, it probably sounds a bit daft, but you know, being a councillor and in public life, um, there is this uh, set of Nolan principles. That you are to uphold and actually they jive very very closely with the um, code of conduct for us bookkeepers that thing about you know selflessness integrity objectivity you know, it it does come very very close so it's it is kind of nice and and, and much like um, as a bookkeeper quite often we're a critical friend you know are we doing the right thing what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Is it the right thing to be doing? Yeah, somebody, one of our members a long time ago said to me, it's a bit like, unfortunately, uh, clients are a bit like children. They don't really want to toe the line, but as they get older, they realise that you were right to tell them to do so. So, you know, uh, anyway, we, but, uh, yeah, so, so those things are uh, certainly true, always went true. And um, Amy, anything else, sir? Uh, yes, I was just sharing, sorry, going to share the link um, to sign up, because I actually didn't realise you could sign up for the coronavirus update, so that's going to be super helpful. I'm just going to share the link there in the chat for people. Um, I was saying look out for the bell icon at the bottom of the page, but actually if I click on that, then there's a, there's a set link. So that's in the chat. Um, Several those of us of a, of a certain age, um, Bill Withers, who sang Ain't No Sunshine and Lean On Me, has died. Age 81. What a shame. I liked him. Anyway, sorry. Completely off, off, uh, off piece there. Carry on. Lots of people saying Kim Aiken says Gloucester City Council has its portal up. Richard James says Cheltenham has started. So that's very nice. Somebody really? from Scotland, of course. Joyce. They've got their grant through already, so that's good. Um, but Lynn confirms, yeah, not all councils have released their portals. She's in Basingstoke, but nothing from there yet. But oh, Wickingham and Somerset apparently are doing theirs. So, so the individual councils rather than anything else. Then. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, and North Lincolnshire paid some yesterday, I see. I think that was Helen who said that. That's good. Oh, and just some people were wondering if you could make the claim on behalf of your clients. And Jay Snell has indeed done it. Um, yeah, for three absolutely. Business properties for one client. Um, and says it's really simple. I mean, if you're a registered tax agent, you know, and you've got your tax, your agent number all lined up and everything else. Yeah, you're, you're a trustee. That's, that's it. That's fine. You can do most things on that. Um, and uh, so that, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> this just goes to show how, um, how hard at work everybody is. Liz says that she's been busy making applications to South Staffordshire Council. Um, and that basically she's had a very hectic week, but hopes that she's going to be able to concentrate on some VAT returns this weekend. Ah, so well, <laughs> everyone's working very, very hard, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I need to just quickly jump in there and say that uh, having suggested that everybody telephones us for a chat and sends us an email, uh, we are really getting stacked up with emails at the moment. We're bringing in some team over the weekend to try and get most of them done. Um, can I just ask in the short term, if you've got a query which is um, a general inquiry about furloughing or something else, can you see if you can find any information first on the website? I mean, as of um, 
yesterday, I think we've got, you know, sort of 100 or so still waiting to be answered. But we are getting several hundred a day at the moment. And we're all working from uh, our respective home offices. And we are trying to get them done. But I think what's happening is you send an email at 10 past 10. And if we haven't applied, replied by half past, you send this one, another one at 25 to chasing up. So our number is looking falsely large. But we're, we're getting there. We really are getting there. We want to be there for everybody, obviously. Um, and uh, I think, Jane, actually, when we did that original video that I mentioned of her, she said she likes to sit and think of ICB as this little family. We're all part of a family. We're all sitting down. Um, yeah, it does feel a bit like that when you've got nearly a thousand emails coming through in a day and, and we need to take on some more members of the family, I think. So um, we're, we're calling some people in and we are taking some on a, some extra staff and uh, we will try and get things down to you. We know it's important and we do pride ourselves on our support. Um, we are the first professional body to offer uh, a daily webinar. In fact, a webinar, I believe, for most people. And uh, those of you who don't already know, have missed my other presentation we have got all of our exams up there waiting for you so you can take uh, your a1 right the way through to m7 exactly as before either through your train provider or through icb it's all online it's as and when you want them absolutely on demand uh, m8 which is the one that was being run uh, through the pearson view centers is the one at the moment that has a slight delay on it because Pearson View have decided obviously to close their centres and we're now working on a, uh, a proctored exam. Now, Peter Stewart, our uh, Director of Learning, was on yesterday and he's been on with me on the uh, student meeting this morning and is saying that it is there is a slight delay on this because I think the proctoring uh, is taking a little bit longer, but it will certainly be, he hopes, uh, next week. Uh, so we have got, I think, a few people waiting for that M8, uh, but talk to us anyway, and we'll, we'll do whatever we can. There might be some circumstances that we can, we can do things differently, but that's what we're aiming at at the moment. And it does appear that a lot of you that have been putting off your exams have suddenly decided now is the time to get this done. So uh, it doesn't matter. The demand can increase absolutely exponentially. It still won't cause us a problem on our system. Um, our ROGO examination system, which is a world leader. You know, we were the first people to completely run uh, serious exams online. I say serious exams because um, we have banks of questions and everybody gets a set of questions and then we can work out if you want to resit or you have to resit. We, have, we can give you another exam, which you, you won't have seen before and all sorts of things. We get an immediate answer back. You get a grading. You get an idea of where everything went wrong. And we work very hard to be at the front of that uh, particular move. And I notice now that people like uh, the Office for Qualifications, etc., are saying everything now needs to go online, including A-levels and everything else. So um, I'm pleased that ICB, uh, you know, we, we, we do lead the field on a number of ways. Amy? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. No, I'm always moving away from my screen, so I can't get back to my mute button easily enough. Um, I think this is quite an interesting one. Um, Jude says that uh, one of the employers that she works with wants to furlough the staff but doesn't have enough money to pay them, so is refusing to pay them, um, but wants to claim the furlough rebate. That's kind of obviously a kind of ethics employment law issue. What would you say that she should advise her client? Um, I think Ian said yesterday that you can't do that. That's what the business interruption loan is there for. Now, some extra information came out about that yesterday. I know the banks have been really difficult about giving out this money. Um, they've had something like 100,000 applications and so far fewer than 1,000 or just about 1,000 businesses have got their money. Now, whether or not that's a normal delay because of the paperwork etc or whether it's because banks can't actually see you face to face and it's all done remotely i don't know but government did say last night um, that um, that they are pushing them much harder than they were the money has got to be available and the uh, rushi uh, the chancellor actually said look the country stood behind you when you were in trouble which is the bank's 
and now we expect the banks to stand behind people when they're in trouble and he's telling them they've got to basically get their finger out and i think the other thing the other thing that was really interesting yesterday on this uh, business consideration loan is that you are no longer required as a director to give personal guarantees and you don't have to do that now the bank will still want to make sure that you're a going concern and they're not just going to give you money to go bankrupt slowly instead of quickly um, but they will look at you just before the pandemic took place before it started and take you on the, the basis of how good your business was just then and, and what you've been doing up till then so if you've been trading uh, with a negative balance for, for a year or so you might find it difficult but for most businesses uh, that money has to be available i would be very interested to know from any of our members if they have any clients that are struggling with this money if they could let me know that would be that would be great um so sorry a bit of a long answer there uh, you, you expect me to ramble i know um and jude actually came back to say they do have the money they just don't want to pay it out until it, it comes back in no they can't do that they have to pay they have to pay it first it's a reclaim so they they can only claim 80 percent of what they've actually paid out now i did ask yesterday again just to make sure can we just send in the form the claim form uh, no it's got you, you send a claim form in having paid out that money and that's why this continuation loan is supposed to be there available and very quick to get so government thinks doesn't necessarily mean it's quite what's happening because there, there are a lot of links in the chain between government and the businesses picking up the money but again uh, just to reiterate what i've just said if anybody can come up with any um any facts on what is going out there uh, that would be useful and I think we, we just what we did just get from our ring round about getting you know our councils taking out paying out their grants it just shows how we as an organization can actually pick information about what's actually going on out there and that's the sort of thing which I can then feed back to government through my contacts and say well we're doing really really well but Hampshire isn't doing well at all it's that's the sort of thing which helps so any information you have like that Give it back to the institute, send it go you know, customer service email, whatever it might be. Um, make sure we get that information because we it helps me. it gives me authority when I go to talk to government if I can give them actual facts. Because I don't want to batter them around the head and say nobody's getting any money, because they'll turn around and say, Well, you know, Norfolk is and somebody else is and South Wales are. So if you see what I'm if you see what I'm saying, it makes us look far more respectable and switched on if we can talk proper fact. Absolutely. Um, so another one of these uh, sort of furlough related questions, Pam says that one of her clients made some staff redundant on the 12th of March. And one employee has come back and said, well, you should actually really be furloughing me. And Pam just wants to confirm that it's up to the employer. It's the employer's um, choice. Yes. You'd have to rehire the employee in order to furlough them. Uh, yes, you would technically. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> one of the things again that was stressed yesterday in the presentation was that you can't ignore um, the Employment Act. So you can't do things um, that you couldn't normally do. There is a little bit of extra help because you've got a pandemic on, but you can't mistreat people. Uh, you can't be biased. You can't take out one section of the workforce and not the other, and all sorts of things. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's very important that you're careful with what you do. Again, we've got a, a free helpline. Uh, it's worth it's worth checking with us. But no, I mean, it, but the whole the whole idea of the loan and the furloughing and everything else is so that when you lay your staff off, you want to retain them because when we come out of this, you're going to want your business to just suddenly take off and and take a. Um, take advantage of all that new business that's going to be out there, all those businesses and companies that are going to be wanting to buy things and sell things, etc. It's to help you retain your good staff, the people that you want to help you build your business afterwards. So, you know, you, you really shouldn't be treating them badly at this stage if there's any possible way of avoiding, you know, but if you have to, if you have to lay them off completely, then, you know, that's a business decision. Just to quickly go back to poor Jude, he's just wondering if the employer 
continues to refuse to actually pay the employees, should she refuse to run the payroll? Yeah, I mean, well, if she's running the payroll to say this is what you should be paying, she, ha she can run that, but she can't run it in a month's time when she knows that the payroll hasn't been paid. But you would normally run the payroll in advance so that you know what everybody's going to get. Then you would make the payment. And I think it, it, this is one of the payday and payment day distinctions that uh, Ian was making yesterday. So, um, yeah, I, I, she needs to be careful. If she, by the sound of it, she has the suspicion that the, that the owner is trying to be difficult or um, is trying to bend the rules, and you should have no part of that. Somebody has just asked, does anyone know, Claire has asked, does anyone know how flexible HMRC are being with time to pay PAYE payments? Um, no, I mean, they're not paying, they've been told to hold it back for the next three months. They will review it after, just before the three months is up, because it could well be that if things haven't improved, we may be asked to bolt down for a further three months. We don't know at this stage. But I understand that, yes, obviously, it may well be, uh, be due at the end of all of this. But uh, all they're saying is that they, they won't come out of this and then make it di too difficult for somebody to continue to run their business. Because that would, that would actually be just a waste of their money and, their, and, and everybody else's time. So I think, I think they're going to be uh, slightly more caring than some people perhaps suggest they are normally over these things. But, I, I don't, but nobody has actually said yet. And always just call. Assign some time for waiting on hold. And call and ask nicely. I wouldn't worry about it too much at the moment because I don't think you can. I think you've got to concentrate on the day-to-day -day stuff of getting the payroll done or uh, you know, making sure everybody that is, is either being furloughed or is not make sure that everybody is covered, that you haven't suddenly got 12 extra employees that you've never heard of, you just have to be auntie, uncle and 10 cousins or something or other, all this sort of stuff. Uh, I would concentrate on getting that done first. Let them get the money. Um, you know, Obviously the government's eventually gonna want you to pay things and pay your VAT. Um, and, and that's obvious because you, you've had that money. I mean, that, the VAT is actually, you're collecting that on behalf of the government anyway, so you're hanging on to it, they're just having their cash flow. Faye has mentioned something that she heard from her accountant, or an accountant, just to say that they have said that some clients have, have called HMRC to say they don't have enough money to pay their clients and uh, sorry they don't have enough money to pay their staff and they feel that hmrc had acknowledged it almost as a priority claim and then she's added five question marks i think because it's sort of hearsay who's who knows but again i suppose that that reiterates that the client should call hmrc and if there's, see if there's anything that can be done do you agree i don't know if you've got any problem had any problems with that jane well, do you have any clients in that kind of situation I'm very lucky that I haven't. Um, the, the clients that I do have have got some reserves sitting there and you know, will be utilising them, but also making use of the furlough because, as Gary's rightly said, when all this passes, they want to be business ready to run. Um, going back um, to a previous point, just looking at the claim for wages through the coronavirus job retention scheme, um, guidance that I printed on the 27th and I put that as a caveat because obviously we know things do slightly change as we go along. It does clearly say that the scheme also covers employees who are made redundant since the 28th of February 2020 if they are rehired by their employer. So there yeah. is that caveat within that but obviously that is an employer commercial decision that they need to make. Yeah, I think that's probably to cover those companies that sort of panicked, sacked everybody overnight, and then, then the uh, furloughing and various other things were announced later. And, ah, okay, sorry, folks, made a mistake. Let's take a step back. And I think, yeah, the government has realised that some people will have made the wrong decision. Um, but uh, 
June has just been, she's going through the notes as I'm, as I'm sitting here now. For those of you who don't know, June is, is my wife and co-founder of the Institute. She, I'm the one that talks all the time. She's the one that doesn't talk as much, but does all the work. But anyway, um, she's just saying she's reading something now and it's coming out of the, I think it's from the SRA, Solicitors Regulatory Authority, saying that if a business is failing, it should be allowed to fail. They can't do anything about it. You know, the government wants to keep businesses that are going concerns going and with as few concerns as possible i've just thought that one up. that's not bad is it anyway uh, so consequently yeah it, you, you've got to be honest about this with your, with your uh, clients if they're clients if your clients are, are actually um sailing too close to the wind they don't have the money they were struggling just before this happened this is not a way of helping them struggle for another three months but still go down at the end of it you know it's to make them not struggle quite so much, but get back on their feet after that three months. And it, it's cruel, perhaps you might think, but you know, the government's doling out billions at the moment and it, it's, it's going to want to make sure that we haven't given it away or we haven't assisted them to give it to people who really haven't deserved it. Yeah, just to add a little bit of clarity there, a couple of people are just saying, does time to pay include PAYE? And Sean is saying, Sean is saying there's no relief on PAYE payments due. Time to pay is just for tax. So potentially NI, I don't know. But there is a, there is a dedicated HMRC line. Um, for I, I've, I've, I've said throughout this, these uh, programmes, uh, you know, I'll say it again, that um, the government didn't have this all set up in waiting in case there was one day a pandemic or a war or whatever it might be. So um, we were talking the other day to Bill Dodwell from the uh, Office for Tax Simplification and he came up with a figure, was it 60,000 people or something other work, work for HMRC? Most of those are now working from home. So not only are they not usually, uh, they're, not, they're not used to working from home, but they're, they're having to come up with all sorts of things which you know, the Prime Minister says, right, we're going to give you £2 billion. And then somebody in Whitehall has to sit there and think, OK, so what form do they fill in? How do they apply for it? Are we giving it directly? Is it going through employers? Is it going, you know, and I mean, I think they're working pretty hard. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be very supportive of government initiatives at the moment and Whitehall and everything else because, you know, I'm finding it difficult to get through to my contacts there because you know, some of the people that I speak to have now been moved and put in different departments and they're doing things that are really out of their comfort zone because in addition to, to doing extra work and extra things they also are suffering from people being um you know put on one side because they've, they've got the they've got the bug or they've got the symptoms or whatever it might be so i think yeah uh, we have to we have to try and work with the system and do what we can with it amy um Terence Ram has just said he managed to get his client twenty five thousand pounds. That's in their sitting in their bank now. I've just asked him to, what what grant was that for, but that's yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a nice thing to be able to get for your client. Yeah, from I what I the bookkeepers have been very successful. Grants. Sorry, I, I missed that, Jane. Apologies. Um, I think that's oh, the okay. sectoral business grants for so for leisure and that side of things. Oh, that might, I know that that was a figure bouncing around for that that particular one. So that might be for that. Yeah. I, I mean, there are a lot of businesses, you know, like uh, coffee shops and restaurants and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, we're going to want our cup of coffee when we've finished all of this. You know, it's, it, we're not going to change our way of living totally. So we've got to have these people back. And the idea that the government is just going to pay everybody's wages for three months. I mean, that's amazing when you think about it. Uh, the rest of the world seems to be following suit now, which is, which is fantastic. But... Uh, my only concern on a, on a dark night as I'm about to go off to sleep is where on earth is all this money going to come from? Or where are we going to, how is everybody going to pay it back? But I think we'll worry about that a bit further down the line because otherwise there'll be, there'll be no sleeping at all. So June has a furrowed brow here. I'm just waiting to see. No, no, she's busy. Um, June spent a lot of her time going through all of the legislation. And whilst I was here the other day, some new stuff had been introduced. She was going through, I think, 600 pages just to just to make one thing happen um and uh yeah so i th i think we're all doing our bit I, I i must say just in case i forget though that you know, our members are being fantastic uh 
we are not getting flat panic from people. We're getting, I'm working hard, I'm working all the hours, I'm helping out my clients, everything. We're not getting people saying, oh, this is terrible, you know, I can't run my business, I've got no clients. And just like Sylvia Borhill, we're just hearing that so many new clients are coming on board. You know, it's, I suppose the thing is, we think there's three and a half million people who do their own books. They probably don't, don't know what to do. They're in a panic and, and they can look at .gov.uk or our hub or wherever they look. Reading it, understanding it, and then doing it are three completely different things. And, and so, you know, this is it. Let, let's get out there and, and help the country, help the clients. And, and, and you know, let's, let's make something good out of this if we can. So, um, other good news. So Sylvia and Linda have both said they know of clients who've run HMRC and apparently, in Linda's words, it was no problem waiving payment of PAYE around £5,000. Right. If you don't ask, you don't get. No, I think you've got to communicate. You know, they've always, the tax office, as far as I'm concerned, was always, always said, if we've got a piece of paper that admits that you owe us money, we're a lot happier than if we just hear nothing from you. And that's the point, um, you know, get the form in there. Otherwise, they're going to start throwing out, throwing out estimates. And that's the last thing you want to be arguing about. So, yeah, let's get that out there. It'd be great. Um, and Sylvia says, Bucks Business First are offering 5000 to pay for professional services to get businesses through the, through the crisis. Um, and she's helping clients to apply to that to pay her fees. So I suppose it is definitely worth looking for local support. Yeah, so actually, well done, Sylvia. I mean, I presume if it's available in Bucks, perhaps it's going well, to be sorry, available. Well, sorry, actually, Sylvia said Buck business first, but I presume that's Bucks. I don't know if it's yeah. specific to Buckinghamshire. I would presume so, but... Although apparently it's already oversubscribed, she says. <laughs> well, well done for getting in there, particularly as you're from Berkshire, but anyway. Um, um, that's great. And Sylvia also suggests ask your creditors for payment holidays, particularly loans and I'm not going to say the other thing she said. <laughs> oh, she says try cancelling subscriptions. <laughs> but you have to pick and choose what subscriptions you um, cancel, of course. Yes. It could be a disciplinary action. Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, yeah. If you don't, if you don't pay your right subscription, you... Uh... Example with cancel. Oh, yes. Cancel must lead by example. But we're thinking on things like magazines. Yeah, yeah. Aren't we? I presume is what she's saying. Um, and Terence Ram confirmed it was a hospitality grant for a cafe. Oh, well done, Terry. Good. That's brilliant. Um, Somebody for the bookkeeping team has asked a question, and I kind of thought I knew the answer to it. She was, they were saying um, that they had um, a client who runs annual payroll, and it was run for eighteen nineteen at the end of the year. Um, and so that's sort of a one-off payment. And I said, um, that's fine. If you want to furlough those staff, the furlough salary is worked out as a calculation of that annual payment divided over a 12 month period. Um, and they've come back and said, surely it would be open to misuse as the director could choose any salary they like. We're only talking 9,000 odd pounds for the year, but what if they decide they want 30,000? Well, You've got to have a historical number to fall back on. I noticed yeah. actually one of the things that we've been talking about uh, this week and last week was those directors who have been claiming uh, a very low salary, but then taking a huge dividend. And there was a lady on television on the, on the lunchtime news just saying, this is terrible. I've been running my business and I've, I've been taking out in dividend and nobody, I'm not able to claim anything on that dividend. Um, and I'm sure... There were many people looking at it like, like I was and saying, well, tough, you've been uh, dodging the tax for five years. I think she said she was in business. Um, no it's not tax dodging, is it? I mean, it is, it is something that is legally allowable. It's legal, yes. But I think if somebody is paying them a very low salary but still taking out the money and then just catching up at the year end, it's, it's what I call an accounting principle, not a bookkeeping. Sylvia has just clarified she was referring to her, her Adobe subscription. And apparently they were very understanding and gave her two free months. So that's very nice. Yeah. Um, 
I gather the software companies are uh, giving help and assistance, but not monetarily at the moment. So I think they, they want their subscriptions to run again, because I think that, you know, it's, an, it's a necessity. And I, I think they believe that people are getting help from government to be able to run businesses. So you should, you should stay in with that. Um, what else have we got here? Um, just a, as I think most of you know, ICB is um, an accredited body with the Commonwealth. Uh, those of you who don't know about the Commonwealth, it's no longer the old uh, British Empire and everything in pink under the sun and all the rest of it. Uh, it's now a collection of the former Commonwealth countries and others that uh, are voluntarily part of a, a large grouping called the Commonwealth of Nations. And in fact, we have, uh, we were told yesterday, another nation has just joined the Commonwealth. That's the Maldives. So we've got the Maldives, Barbados, the Seychelles, and I'm hoping when all this is all over, uh, that the, the uh, team at ICB decided the president should go and visit some of these far-flung corners of the world, just to keep morale up, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we'll, we'll go. Huh? Queen speaks to the nation. Oh yes, and um, mostly the Queen is speaking to the nation on Sunday. Those of you who saw um, the Prince of Wales talking earlier today did not look particularly well, looked rather red, but he was, uh, he was saying that he was through the worst as he was opening the uh, marvellous Nightingale Hospital at the uh, uh, Excel Centre. Uh, of course, lots of things that were going to take place at the Excel Centre have moved, so I did notice that the, the hospital sections looked very much like uh, an exhibition to me, <laughs> same sort of equipment, but it, it, it's obviously done, uh, been done very quickly, very well. So good luck to them. By the way, if any of you or your your team or your clients are helping uh, with the call for help from government, there's 750,000 of you that have volunteered. If any of you are doing that, let me know. Uh, let's take a photograph of yourself, do a selfie, send it on to us, and we'll carry that in our newsletter because I'd, I'd like to think that some of us are able to do that. And uh, uh, I hope. Some of you, um, all of you, hopefully, were out last night clapping, making sure that uh, we were supporting the NHS. Um, and uh, so that was good. What else have we got here? I've got a few things, other things I wanted to say. We're expecting an announcement today with the normal government announcements that come out, the, the catch up. Something to do with some additional help for um, the self-employed, we understand, but I don't know what that means. Uh, so those of you who are avid watchers of uh, what I call the three-pronged attack there, uh, so we'll, we'll see what that, that's all about. Universal credit. Um, I gather that 950,000 people have already applied for universal credit. Don't know if that means they've got it, but certainly they've applied for it. So universal credit for all those of you perhaps who are um, self-employed or your clients that are self-employed. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a lot of money. We absolutely appreciate which is why the announcement today might, might presumably be something, uh, some sort of boost for that. Uh, but we'll see. I think the problem with the self-employed people is that so many of them have got tiny little incomes and odd incomes and incomes at different times of the year and not at others. A lot of it is seasonal. It does get very difficult to work out what on earth is going on there. So it would be interesting to see how they come to a head with that one. Incidentally, on Tuesday of next week, we've got uh, Claire with us, who is our, um, I've forgotten her name, it's Claire Gare. No, uh, our payroll lady, she's the lady. Warner. Claire Warner, that's her, Claire Warner who writes um, or works with our, our uh, exam writers to make sure our payroll exams are right. She's coming on on uh, Tuesday. So those of you who have more payroll questions, she knows what she's doing. She is a, she's a practitioner as well. So she's out there doing things. So she'll be on at three on um, Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we will have Nick Good, who was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately has, has, was called away. Uh, Nick left Sage uh, a short while ago where he's been for years and we've been working with him uh, oh probably 10 11 years or something rather and he's now joined Revolut Business which is the business arm of the Revolut Bank which is one of these new challenger banks and he uh, is coming on to talk to us about when uh, 
is the best time to switch banks, why you would need to switch a bank, etc. Uh, give us some thought leadership on that. And also some of the questions that have been asked about these banks and classes, are, are they here to stay? Are you at risk by putting your money into a, a new bank rather than sticking with the old uh, NatWest, Lloyds, uh, Barclays, HSB, etc. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what he has to say. And if anybody has got any ideas for anything else you'd like us to discuss next week, will you please let us know? Because we're coming up very much with, with what's coming out to us, what we think is right. But if any of you have got any ideas, let us know. So we are also next week planning um, another run of our student seminars. And I know a lot of our members, some of you who are on here today, have already also been into the student seminar because you're taking this opportunity perhaps to do a bit more study. Uh, catch up with uh, your next level of membership so so if you want to go into one of those as well you can and we're also putting together now a stream of seminars um, that assist people again whilst, whilst you're sitting at home um, things that you might like to do like look how to expand your business where to find extra clients all that sort of stuff which we'll be working on uh, so uh, Paula Vesey Smith who is our chair of council she um, used to run the business builder seminars for us. Obviously, we can't do seminars in hotels anymore. So we're looking at putting something similar to that online. And Amy was talking earlier on to our students about the setting up in business booklet that we've used to produce uh, in various formats that we've produced over the years. That the new one of those is coming out. So we're also taking the time in between answering your emails and phone calls, etc., to um, get a lot more of our what we call uh, collateral in school, fancy, in fancy titles, um, together so that we've got even bigger and better stuff to give you when, when we come out of all this. I would um, urge you to look out for what's going on at the Inspire Tour. That takes place now in May, as uh, we've already said. And <clears throat> that's going to be virtual, but we've got some new, uh, quite fun ideas to make it very very pertinent and we're looking at the possibility of at the end of each day or at the end of each session you'll be able to answer some questions uh, straight online and that will turn your uh, cpd into uh, structured cpd from unstructured because we'll know that you were listening you didn't switch off halfway through or nod off or whatever you were doing so that's coming up uh, that that will be new for us new for you so please let's have a go at that one and we've already got I think about 100 people booked for summit in uh, November. So that's fantastic. What are the dates, Amy? Give us the dates. So this is people I that are have desperately tried to book a ticket. We've put them on a list of people to notify as soon as the tickets are available. But it's the uh, 16th and 17th of November at the Novotel in West London, which is in Hammersmith. So it's um, a hop, skip and a jump, five minutes walk from Hammersmith Station, um, which is on many underground lines and easily accessible by the main line stations of Victoria. Yeah, about 15, 15 minutes from Houston, 16 to 17 minutes from King's Cross. So it's a little bit easy to get to. That, isn't it? That. Maybe mm -hmm. it took longer. Maybe it took longer, but yes, very easy to get to. And also um, what's cool about it is you go in and you've got the exhibition on your right and you've got the main um, content, the stage and everything on the left. So it's all on one floor and it's very open. <coughs> None of that traipsing up and down stairs. I think it'll be wonderful. And we'll be so desperate to get out and see people by that point. So it's going to feel like a party. Yeah, well, well it always does seem like a party. I mean, we, uh, the, uh, yeah, the party that we have there, the after dinner party, after Luca party, is uh, quite a thing to be reckoned with. And uh, yeah, some, uh, some people certainly come up with some interesting dance moves. Sylvia. Anyway, no, we won't yeah. say that. <laughs> Great, Very time. Good. It's great night, and we had a good band last year. We've got them again, I think, haven't we? Or depending on how it all yeah. goes. But, yeah, well, I think they went down very well. They were brilliant, weren't they? And they play all the hits, which is nice. Um, and yes, Claire, if you want to just email your desperation to get to the summit, please do send us an email, and we'll stick you on the list, and we will be alerted as soon as the tickets are available. Um, but yeah. 
In the meantime, book in to go to the Inspire Tour. It's only £45, reduced from £70. Bit of a steal, really. There's at least eight hours of learning content. Is that per day? Yeah, you're home. Is it what, sorry? Eight hours CPD per day? Or we per... are going to be broadcasting it over three days, the 28th and 29th and 30th of uh, this month of April, and but they will be recordings that are available afterwards. But the um, you are going to be asked to do a quiz at yeah, the end right. of each session. So if you want to get your CPD badge for having attended all of those sessions, you can watch them at, at, at your leisure. But unless you pass the quizzes, you won't get that badge. <laughs> so I think that'll make it more fun. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. Um, we've got, again, we've got some people booked for that already. That's before they knew what was happening, really. So that's a great thing about our members. They do want to be involved. And, and sometimes we get very close to an event. We've got two or 300 people booked and we haven't actually published what it is we're going to do at the event. So, so that's good. Oh, well, can I say whilst um, I know we've got some of our branch chairs on that actually uh, the branch meetings have all gone um, virtual. And actually, they've almost gone viral. Wow, have we had some attendances. You know, we've been getting uh, 30, 40 people attending in these new viral meetings. And it's bringing in members that have never been to a branch meeting before, which is absolutely fantastic. You know, um, a very pleasant consequence of, of the current situation. But we've had a number of people who are disabled, uh, who have been able to join for the first time. Which we didn't know they were disabled. They didn't tell us. But uh, well, else we could have helped before, but we didn't know. And lots of people who are perhaps a little nervous about going into a group of um, members who've been doing this for years and they're a bit concerned about going in. But that all seems to be by the wayside now because they're keen to join. And we are increasing the number of uh, branches that we have so that everybody roughly has a, everybody else from within their county. But if you want to go to more than one branch meeting, if you want to go to all of them, you can do uh, they're free you don't, to, you, know, you don't have to pay for anything you just join in you're going to a zoom like this uh, most of them will actually you'll see everybody's faces as well we can't do this on this because we have rather too many you know we normally have about four to five hundred on this from uh, who've come in and booked through the the website we have another I think two to three hundred uh, possibly as many as four hundred who come through on facebook so uh the screen wouldn't look any good we, we'd never see everybody on there but, uh, anyway so that's good jane i'm i'm sorry we seem to be leaving you alone for a minute there we're we're, we're tumbling on i know you're busy and i think you were um ready to uh get off it's it is quarter past four um have you got any last message that you want to give us uh, from uh, the depths of Norfolk? I think the most important thing is to remember to be kind not only to ourselves but I mean you've already alluded to the fact that so many people are working from home so many people are having to adapt it's not just us and our members you, you mentioned about HMRC are having to work from home and adapt and overcome yeah it's it's the same in our local authorities and our councils and they are facing exactly the same challenges that businesses are facing. So yeah, let's try and be a little bit kind and kind to ourselves and just give ourselves some space. And to that poor lady that's been doing 14 hour days, please make use of the sunshine that's coming up this weekend and top up that vitamin D, even if it's in the garden. Let's just be mindful a little bit in this period. That's lovely, actually, Jane. Thank you very much for that. It was really nice to see you again. Thank you for taking part. I know you're busy, so we'll uh, we'll see you again. And, and uh, if uh, you want to leave us now, we can. We'll finish off. And uh, uh, but but it's been brilliant to see you again. And uh, give it, give our best to that little teenager that you were carrying once upon a time. Did you? <laughs> and carry me now, bless him. But yes, lovely to see you all. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, Jane. Okay, everybody. Um, I think we probably come to the end of things. Is that right, Amy? We we about through on those questions. We... I think that's about it. It's just just Jude and Faye just really do want to, to be told what they should do if one of the, their clients is refusing to pay employees. Um, so they're like, should I run the payroll wrong? 
as per their instructions or should I run the payroll as nil payroll? Can we take some legal advice on that and I will, we'll, I'll have something for you on Monday. It may be that it's something that's announced by government in their next couple of things, so it, it will already be sorted by, by Monday. But it is something we are being asked a lot. So I just want to make sure that I don't give you duff information because, you know, different departments within HMRC are well known for thinking of the hoof. I just want to make sure. So if you can stall them till we meet again on Monday. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'll. I'll I'll try and get that. My answer is at the moment you can't do it, but let me see if there's anything that would be made into. So, you know, morally and legally, I think it's wrong at the moment. Let me just check everything out because, uh, you know, I don't want to give you the wrong information. Amy. Oh, no. Other than Kim Aiken has mentioned that she works for a charity that gets charity rate relief, but not small business rate relief, and that the charity is not uh, therefore entitled to any of the grants. And as I understand it, there has been some talk about the fact that charities have sort of been left out as well. Do you yeah, have I, any I, updates I, on that, or is it just sort of keeping our fingers crossed it might change? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think the thing is they, they, they've they gone for the low-hanging fruit, as, as they call it in, in marketing, you know, the easiest ones to get to. There will be lots of other anomalies because, I mean, most charities will pay either no rates or a very heavily reduced rate because they are charities. So they were probably missed off because they, they, when they were talking about rates, they didn't need to be discussed and they'd missed them off everything else by accident. I mean, who knows? Um, you know, I, I know from when we sit down with, with the Institute or um, sometimes we sit down with council and we, we come up with what we think is a, is a cunning plan only to find that we've forgotten something and it, it affects something else further down the line that we hadn't even considered in our, in our wildest dreams. So it is, it is possible that nobody around the table thought about that one. And, and as I say yesterday with Ian Holloway, who, who lives, eats and breathes payroll, you know, he's, he's uh, the compliance, head of compliance for a very big payroll operation. And our members were asking him things. And he said, oh, I don't know the answer to that one. And he was being very honest with us. So uh, but we, we'll, I'll see what we can do. Certainly on that one about the payroll. Um, I, yeah, if, uh, if, if you can't wait for Monday, Faye, then I would suggest you need to get advice like our legal people if you like or whoever but i will take that under advisement is the word for say they said she's gonna wait thank you yeah oh, brilliant thank you thank you for that uh and that's it really other than you can't book your tickets for the summit yet but you can go on the waiting list to be informed as soon as the tickets are available if you want to be on the waiting list the uh, just email us at member services at bookkeepers.org.uk and um, we'll stick you on it. But yes, ain't no party like a summit party, says Carol. And apparently we're calling it Agatha's Band. I don't know why, but we liked them. So that's good news. We'll get them back. They were very, very good, weren't they? Actually, I, I've been to many parties where the, the house band is rubbish, um, you know, and uh, they play some music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'm of a certain age. Loads of parties, huh? Back to back parties. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and, and and I and I alluded before to uh, the, the moves on the floor and uh, uh, Sylvia, but also Kirsty, Kirsty Singer. She uh, she she was uh, doing a fair old wheel there at one stage, so so jolly good, and uh, a lot of our members were as well. So yeah, it's a good night. I I think conference is is a great time to learn, but also let the hair down to just be on be you know on. on open to new ideas and, and to share thoughts and it just shows you that we've got this huge community of which we're all part and it, it's great to be that so anyway it would appear your one of your young assistants is, is about to enter the scene so you need to go as well so yeah. thank you very very much to everybody i hope you can find some enjoyment this weekend which is due to be sunny i'm told and, and i hope you have something like get out get some exercise stay away from everybody else Stay fit up. Oh, that's my beautiful granddaughter, Amber, there. And we will uh, see you all on Monday. Monday at 3 o'clock. Uh, look forward to seeing you then. Uh, 
But above all, look after you, look after number one, and see you again soon. Bye, everybody.